So today's lesson is on 6.5 standard components, um, and also we're going to fit into it 6.6, which is about layouts. So they're kind of very related, so we're going to talk about 6.5 and 6.6. So first off, components. So components are just all the basic building blocks of our program. Um, labels, buttons, text fields, text areas, checkboxes, sliders, they're all very similar. You know, these are standard components, and a J panel is also a component, by the way. Uh, but we've been customizing that, right? Every time we say um, public void pink component, that is <clears throat> overriding and creating a custom J panel. Uh, oftentimes, we don't have to do that, and we don't have to do that for J panel either, oftentimes. Um, but we're just going to go through some of their capabilities, what they look like. A few of the differences here a J label is just a label, the user cannot edit it. All these guys are kind of what you'd expect, and I'll try to zip through and show some of the features. They all generate action events, just like timers. When you click a button, when you push enter on a, a text field or text area, uh, when you submit the checkbox, that's all going to generate an action event. Okay, so you're going to have to catch those action events with the action performed listener. Now, you might ask yourself, here's a good question. What if I'm clicking, I have four buttons here, right? All of them would generate action events. How would I know whether it's a plus, a minus, a times, or a divide? Right, since all generates J buttons generate these, how do you tell? There's actually two ways. So we can do e.getSource, which will return the object that generated the event, or we could do e.getActionCommand, which will give us a string, which is the label of um, the button or the text field or whatever. So we'll probably do this a little bit more, but just recognize the fact that you can either get the object with getSource, or get the string with get action command. All right, so briefly, I'm just going to zip through the longer notes here. Um, all components are subclasses of, uh, are, excuse me, all J components are subclasses of component. Just like with the J panel, because that's a component, we can get the width and get the height. We can do all kinds of things like this. Um, so J buttons have uh, constructors. And of course, you have to register them like um, anything else. You have to add an action listener. Let's see, J labels. And for most of these two, when you pass in a default here, um, like the string, that'll be the label of it. Message.setText. When you want to change the text, we're going to use this later on. So just be aware of that. Set text. Uh, there's checkboxes, um, text fields, and text areas. But I'm really going fast here because you know you can see all these things here. I'm not really. You can look those up online if you really need them. Um, it's really not, you know, something you have to memorize. The one that is a little bit different is J slider, and so J sliders do not generate action events. Every slide that you make is going to generate a change event instead. Okay, so a change event. So you need to implement the change listener um, to uh, to do that. Okay, uh, J sliders. When you create one, you can set the min, max, and value. Um, you can do things like set orientation, uh, and we're going to do a little practice this, setting the major tick spacing, minor tick spacing, things like that. That is, that is a slider, and again, as I said, that generates a change event. Um, all right, now, when we do something like this, we're going to have a calculator here. Um, how do we get it to look nice like this? How do we get it to have all these different rows, these four here? That bleeds right into 6.6, six, which is layout manager. So let's look at that real briefly. 6.6 six, six, layout managers and we talked about this in the very beginning of the chapter but there's kind of three main layouts that we're going to use in the beginning of the uh, in this chapter excuse me so flow layout is the default and the flow layout is you just keep adding until you can't anymore and then you just go to the next row and you just kind of keep adding until you can't anymore and just go that way right border layout as we practiced kind of creates this north south east west center divide and you would just add it to border layout dot center, border layout dot east, or whatever. Grid layout allows us to divide it up into like you know two by three or four by five. You just specify in here the rows and the columns. Now, why do we care about layouts? It's because if you didn't, I mean, think about think about the difference between uh, simple paint. Um, how annoying that was. We didn't write it; the textbook author did. But simple paint, you had to specify all of the coordinates and here we have it this is simple paint if you look at paint component here i have to calculate stuff like height minus 56 divided by seven for all these guys i'm drawing a border by hand with each pixel um i'm calculating you know based off of this is 50 pixels wide so on and so forth 
Um, what if I want to shrink it or grow it or so on and so forth? I mean, look at all this hardcore information, right? So we don't want to do it that way, right? We want to have uh, the, the Java handle that for us. So rather than computing coordinates, if we just have a container and we set the layout, let the container be often a J panel or a J frame. Now the, the syntax that we, uh, we do here, let's say we have a, a layout set, okay, like grid layout or board layout. And then, what, then we want to add stuff, right? We're going to add stuff in order. It'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six. It's always this syntax, container.add components, right? Container.add components, right? So this is the important syntax number two besides the listener syntax that I kept uh, talking about. You can also add a border if you want. Uh, so you say, all right, this is the panel dot set border. It's in a stat. It's a static method inside this border factory class. So border factory dot create blah 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 border. Uh, again, that'll help you instead of doing the borders by hand like the author did for simple paint. And so that is uh, that's what we're going to talk about in six six. So um, briefly looking at those, <clears throat> uh, I don't want to look at all these things here. But uh, again, we have flow layout, right? It'll just keep adding it until you run out of space. Border layout lays it out like this. And then grid layout lays it out in a grid. You specify the rows and the columns. Uh, border layouts, uh, sorry, excuse me, borders, you can create again from this border factory. Here's some different ones pointed out. And so I briefly just wanted to point out again, here's this little calculator we'll talk about. But again, I wanted to point out that even if you have only one thing here, like you can add a bunch of things within this by putting a J panel, right? So let's say I have this, this is a grid layout, let's say, and I've got one, two, three, four, four rows and only one column. So it's a four by one. Um, and then inside I've got it a J panel, but the J panel itself, this is a J label, the X equals, and this is a J text field, right, in flow layout. This is another J label, and this is a J text field, and then the J panel is contained in that. And then here, this is a J panel, right? Because you have to use the J panel as a container. And to that J panel, you add one, two, three, four buttons in a grid layout, right? This is a one by four, right? Because you only have one row and four columns. And then finally, you just have a J label. So, you know, you're adding a container within a container for these for these guys. So just be aware of that. And again, the the uh, syntax was container dot add component. So now I'd like to take a look at uh, the actual simple calculator application. You can see you can type in stuff like five times six is 30, five plus six is 11. It'll just do it for you. So it's kind of cool, it displays it here. So let's take a look here. Um, this is again an example where the J panel is itself a listener and he puts main inside here. Um, we have some instance variables of some of these components, text fields and labels. And uh, you can see we have a border set by the uh, by the border factory, and you can see excuse me the J uh, text field and so on and so forth. And again, I want to point out what we have here is this is a J panel, and then inside we have a, a J label x equals and a J um, <clears throat> a J text field here. And notice we're using that that syntax again. It's uh, Container dot add components. I'm adding a J label to this J panel container. Right? Container dot add component. Same thing here. And again, I said the third one is a um, is also a J panel, right? So the J panel is always used as a container. And then we put it in a grid layout one by four. If you try four by one, you could see the difference. If you try to switch that around, the buttons be kind of weird looking like that. So four rows by one column. So let's go back to one by four. <clears throat> um, but again, we see uh, we have these buttons. We create the buttons and we do this thing like container dot add and then the component, right? The container is this button panel here. And again, <clears throat> don't forget, once you create this J button uh, container, sorry, J panel container button panel, the button panel itself is going to have to be added, so don't forget about that. Okay, so when you finish all of these guys, and then you're on this last one here, which is this just the J label here. Don't forget, you are finishing now. I don't like it when he actually says it like this because it's like kind of confusing. I like to say this dot add, this dot add, 
this dot add. And you don't have to because this can be implied. But again, I like to do it that way because that just reminds me, again, it follows the same syntax as everything else. It's container.add component. So we can see it. The container is this, right? I'm the, I'm the kind of main thing here. And to that, I'm adding the X panel. That's this whole thing. The Y panel, this whole thing. The button panel, this whole thing. And then the uh, answer. I guess it wasn't a panel because it wasn't uh, combined with things. Okay, so that's the type of thing you'd have to do. Uh, also, please note that in the <clears throat> button panel, these are actually going to do something, right? We want this to do something when we click it. So that's going to fire off action events. So we add an action listener. Again, this is also an action. It's listening on itself. That's why it's doing that, right? This is the uh, component that generates the event and then the, um, the listener. So plus, minus, times, divide. So we have to handle that, right? So we have action performed, and then it goes and just does its thing. So you can read through that, but uh, that's kind of the, the main things here. And note the use of set text to change the J label. We're going to do that as well. All right, uh, next up, slider demo. Just to look at this real carefully, or not real carefully, really quickly, excuse me. So you can see here, um, same type of thing. Uh, we have a grid layout, again, four by one. So we've got four rows, one, two, three, four by one column. We've got a border, you can check that out. And again, sliders generate change events. So we have to have a change listener. So it appears that this guy is listening on itself. Yep, it's a change listener. Okay, so again, you can just see that uh, there's uh, several um, options that we have, such as uh, major tick spacing, minor tick spacing. You can play around with those. Uh, and then again, state changed is the uh, method that you would uh, be, that would be called <coughs> when the change event fires. We can also do set text uh, on this label. So if we try to change this, we can set this text. Um, and look, they use the get source. Get source again checks to see what is the object that generated that event, right? What is the object that fired that? Remember the two ones that you can do, we can say get source, which returns the object, or get action command, which returns the string. 